Janine, thank you so much for joining me on the Seller and Owners Collective Podcast. Pleased to have you here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So before we start, because I'm really looking forward to talking about the topic that we're going to chat about today, but I want to just take a moment and say, who are you, Janine? Where are you in the world? How did you start and how did you get to be doing what you're doing now? Okay. And I'll try to keep it brief because it is a bit of a story. Um, so I'm Janine Jarman. I... I'm a salon owner for the last 16 years. Uh, Six of those, I had a salon in uh, New York. But for 16 years, I've had heroin salon in Los Angeles, and I currently have that. Um, More recently, I am the founder of Curl Cult, a modern take on the perm and actually patent pending formula. So I really did like change the perm, you know, Um, and we'll, we'll get into more of that. But uh, let's see what else. I, you know, I've done a bunch of stuff because I'm in LA, uh, you know, celebrity hairdresser to people that people know. Um, what else? Educator. A lot of my like secret work was behind the scenes for different product brands, helping them develop their products and like helping them make it make sense for a hairdresser, for a consumer for a salon owner. So having that conversation. So all these years, 20 years in the business, me coming out with my own line, not that odd of a progression. Like it may, like if anyone doesn't totally know me, they're like, and then you just came out with a perm. It's like, well, it actually took me seven years. And it's what I've been doing behind the scenes for a lot of other brands. And really something I'm really passionate about is making things that people don't just like like or use, but that they love and that that helps improve their life, their work, their hair. I'm I'm one of the reasons I'm excited to have you on the podcast is because when I did my apprenticeship and I grew up, quote unquote, grew yeah. up in, in, in the hairdressing world, uh, that's what I cut my teeth on. Do you know how mm-hmm. we color now is how we permed? Makes me sound really old, but that's how we permed. And so as an apprentice, at Christmas time, I would go home and sleep and dream of perms and I remember one night waking up and I I must have been asleep but I looked at the wall and the wall was just covered in red perm rods and so I I feel like um, I know perming intimately and almost was sad that it you know went away so I'm quite excited to see texture re-emerge and to give opportunity to people who otherwise don't get texture and curl to have it back like we're waiting for the curl to come back well, and that was the thing. It wasn't like, I mean, I'm, yes, I'm the weird perm girl for sure. Always have been like, even in beauty schools, like the one of the, me and the two Japanese exchange students were the only ones that were like, yay, perm day. <laughs> um, and I was lucky enough to have Miss Francis. She was like the 1987 perm champion of the United States as my beauty school instructor. So she, you know, like I got it from one of the most OG, like, perm passion people um and then going to school with uh kids from japan i got to see like i rolled kanichi one of the students on um stir sticks and you know got to see like how it was such a creative form of expression and shortly realized like although you know most of us didn't have the dexterity and that's why we like hated it i mean among other things it's messy it's smelly blah 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 but to me, it's the most punk rock thing you can do to hair. We're breaking bonds and reconnecting them all in a couple hours. Like we are immediately changing somebody's texture of their hair till it, it permanently, you know? And that's, it's, it's powerful. More than that, it's helpful. Like I think in recent times, you know, a lot of the, the trends for the last 10 years have underserved a, a wide group of clients so clients kind of were like well I don't really want hot pink hair and I don't really want extreme blonde hair so I guess I'll just do this and there was this really underserved clientele that I recognized and they were like oh I wish my hair would just style itself and I started like well I can perm you and I can use like as a session stylist utilize the tips and tricks of how I set hair on an iron apply those somewhat to a perm. Now perm will never give you iron curls, hot tools, just here's the fun sciency. Those break salt bonds and perms break dull sulfide bonds. So just based on the chemistry alone, it'll always give you a, 
a different effect and perms being a it's imitating natural things that could exist in real life which are not perfect barrel curls <laughs> yet to meet the, i've yet to meet her yes. um, <laughs> maybe she's out there i doubt it um but we can get you with the perm you can get a whole heck of a lot closer to it and now we're seeing even more people embrace their natural texture but again a big part of the customers left behind the clients left behind because they're like well I don't have naturally curly hair so I guess I can't do the curly method and I've had plenty try where they're like I did it I didn't shampoo my hair for three months and my hair's still not curly I was like okay so gotta have curly hair to do that and yeah so I leaned into perms and did um always like I was like oh it'll look great in two weeks you know and I'm like, man, no wonder hairdressers don't want to do it. It's smelly. It's messy, time consuming. Um, and it's and easy to get wrong. Like it's, it's you know, to get it's wrong. easy to get oh, it wrong. Mm -hmm. It's a roll of the dice. You're like, oh, hope I, I processed it all evenly. Hope it didn't fry within the five second window. Mm -hmm. And that's what I spent seven years with a chemist in Italy and a lab that was crazy enough to listen to me um, getting right. So we did, we revolutionized it. We used, um, uh, we use amino acids instead of like the harsh chemicals. So we're 7.2 more neutral perm. Cysteine and cysteamine is how we break the bonds softly. We produce a much softer curl. So it, um, not true to rod size. So you'd go two to three rod sizes down of what your, your goal is. So smaller, which is nice. So now you're not, oh man, everybody looks like ramen. Like you will are hard pressed to get ramen hair. That's what you're going for. Probably don't use our perm, but um, I wanted to, like, that's not what the general public wants. Like, we're, I'm not sure. going after mature box perms. This is for people that like never even considered perming. Um, I'm teaching hairdressers now, like we're in over 500 salons. We're teaching hairdressers how to perm. Most of them are like, uh, I haven't done one since beauty school. And it gets into this even bigger, wider conversation of inclusive hairdressing and not being like, oh, I don't do that kind of hair. Well, when you teach, I've now noticed when I teach someone how to create curls, do you know what their first question is? How do I cut this? How do I color this? So there becomes this, like, we break down the barrier in reverse by creating the curls, then we, they want to cut it. They want to support it. They want to get into it more. So I, I hope like, I know that's super heady, but I'm like, I hope this is more of an equalizer in the industry to get those stylists over that hurdle and for us to have a, a much fiercer approach to texture and, and include it in every client that it's, we service clients, not skin color or texture. Like we service clients and what their needs may be cr creating texture you know, softening it, whatever, whatever it may be. I really love this because um, it's almost going beyond fashion also, because I feel like in the in the 80s and 90s, well, early 90s, we permed everything to death, you know, tight yeah. curly curls. And uh, and then we got sick of that. And so we colored everything to death. And then, then came the smoothing service. Yeah. And so now everything was straight. And so the look was straight. And if you couldn't get the straight look, you were screwed and yeah. you were out of fashion and uh, and then the the barrel curl and the soft wave came in which is great too but it's let's face it it's high maintenance it takes a long time to do um so I feel like this now we've got the full spectrum of yeah. options available whether it's texture whether it's curl whether it's smoothing whether it's wavy um and actually we can just choose for self what do I like yes. what do I choose and what's going to suit my hair which way do I want to go so it's kind of putting us back on an even playing field I feel yeah well and I think getting us more comfortable in our own hair you know although yeah. a, a perm you know you're maybe a lot of the perms I do are, are are on frizzy hair on on uneven curl patterns you know mm. but by getting a perm they get it every six months and don't have to worry about their hair they're washing you know putting scrunching it doing the like simple curly method but their hair is growing longer their their scalp's healthier their hair's not breaking off and they're saving time they're also feeling not like this is it sounds so silly but there were so many myself included this I'm not 
a per this is my natural curly hair, by the way. I inspire perms. But I fought this for so many years and it was like, oh God, if I go on vacation to somewhere humid, I'm gonna look hideous. It's like, that's not okay. Like, I don't accept that you are only you only look good when it's like this way. Yeah. Trimmed and prepped and like can't touch water. Like, what? <laughs> this is insane. Swim, get out there, live your life, go in the sauna, do the things. I love this too because I've got naturally fine hair. I've got a lot of hair, but it's super fine. And so if I don't do anything with it, it's super flat. Yep. So I, I've had my fair share of perms, not the curly whirly ones, but just to give me so I don't look like a pinhead um, and no volume. So I feel like yeah. there's multiple markets of, of groups of people that want perms, but for different reasons. We just haven't oh, had yeah. them available to offer them. Not and not one that was different, not one that like had softer results that was less damaging, easier to use, like a big, um, you know, I had, so my business for perming blew up. Like that's how I knew clients wanted it. The hurdle was hairdressers didn't want to do it. My own hairdressers. I was like booked months in advance. I'm like, you guys, I'm charging like 500, $600 for a perm. I'm making more money than I've ever made with color people flying in from Dubai, from Florida, like, which I'm great at perms, don't get me wrong, but it's a very teachable thing. Like I'm definitely can teach anybody how to do them. Um, I was like, this is crazy. So something has to change. And that was where I, one of it was like using end papers, using hard rollers, um, the process in itself. So I made sure that, the, you know, a lot of the, the testing and the formulating that went in, the effort that went in was that it smelled substantially better. Uh, the smell now has more just like a sour note, but it dissipates once you neutralize. And for that, I do a lot of like really long haired perm clients as well. Impossible to rinse out in the shampoo bowl. And that for a modern perm, like my model behind me, that would take a big old head of rollers, right? getting that rinsed out like you do one you're like I'm over this like this is I, she's drenched I'm drenched we're drenched I didn't rinse like get to half of them so I needed to innovate on that and we were able to with my chemist um neutralize over top so no more rinsing no more blotting oh I love this, this I, and it, it's only oh, the only people that can truly appreciate it and the smell which I wish we had like Cento vision are ones that permed <laughs> like it, it's always a mixed class. I'm like, who's permed? Who hasn't? And I'm like, and then you neutralize over top and the like youngins who haven't permed, they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> and then anybody else is like, what? I'm like, I know that's for my people. So that was for you guys. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I just want to touch on something that you said that I picked up on. Um, yeah. You said, I'm paraphrasing now, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. You kind of said, I'm smart. I'm good at perms, but it's not because I'm particularly smart. Like this is teachable. And for me, yeah. I work with business owners to get them to be able to grow and scale your business. You need to be able to find services that you can teach quickly and effectively. Yeah. And it's not, yeah. the business not, is not focused around you. And I feel like this is a service that you can get young up and comings, income generating quickly and teach yeah. them this skill because it's teach teachable and it's systematic. There's a yeah. systematic approach to perming and you can get them moving quickly. Um, I love this as a business tool inside a business model. It's, and I can say in my own salon in one year, once I just got a handful of our new stylists perming, that's the first question I ask when we're hiring now, especially if they don't come with a clientele. I'm like, do you perm? Are you willing to learn how to perm? And they're able to hit their numbers and their goals by yeah. just doing perm walk-ins. And yeah. these are clients that are like not the normal kind of weird walk-ins. These ones are, they have sought out our salon for the perms and are going to stick with them and send them people, you know, and then that client also turns into a haircut and a color. So she doesn't even, she or he doesn't stop at a perm always. It's no, because it's right. a softer perm. You can still do all the other services. This doesn't cannibalize anything else. This drives new, unique business to your chair, seeking out these services. They are a lot less high maintenance. And for, I'm a mom of two kids. My biggest thing as a colorist, well, there's two. I became allergic to the color. So I was like, great, that's fun. And then two, those big color corrections that were so in style, 
I could only book them in the beginning of my day. So I was really limited because I had to go pick up my kids. I couldn't stay till nine o'clock at night. I no longer have that. You know, it was like, it became a young man's game doing color corrections or somebody that has a nanny or whatever. Like I couldn't take those on because I have to be out at a certain time yeah. to pick my kids up on time. Yeah. And I can do that yeah. now with perms. They are, they process in a very predictable amount of time. And it's, yeah, it's great. And, and I can do three a day and make 1500 bucks. Let's talk about marketing a little bit because, um, as we know, in any kind of yep. ground level branding exercise, we need to find a unique value proposition that we can yep. offer a, a set clientele. We can't be all things to all people. I love that not only is this sort of one really clear value proposition, but actually within it, there's a whole bunch of micro uh, problems that you can fix, whether yep. it's volume, whether it's smoothing, whether it's smoothing curling. Um, do you know some people are curly underneath and straight on top and all of those there's all of these yeah. people out there having a really hard time with their hair and nobody is speaking to that market directly and so this really makes you stand out from any other salon that's in your area because I don't know about yeah. you where your salon is but for me when I had my salon when I did my apprenticeship there was um when I did my apprenticeship there were seven salons on the same t-cross intersection so how do you yeah stand out from the salon down the road and make yourself different. Otherwise it's a problem for clients to find a salon. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think today it's customer service. Like I think we have gotten so far from what the core value of being a hairdresser is. And it's a day maker. Like they're coming to you to solve problems. You know, it's always joke like, Oh, I'm a therapist, but that's, because you're a really important part of somebody's life and by specializing by which I'm not against that but I don't know if it is if it is sustainable always there's always going to be the one percenters like go get them do it but careful specializing in trendy things rather lean into things that solve problems like that okay. is if you're solving a problem for a client you're irreplaceable. And that's always my, my goal for my stylist and for other stylists is like, how do you make it easy to do business with you? How do you make it hard to replace you? Yeah. You know, yeah. like how, like that should be your focus. What is, I love that. And is it services? Is it the relationships you're building? Because they can get expensive highlights just about anywhere. Yeah, for sure. Especially um, in Los Angeles, like that's yeah. not hard to find. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about social media. You mentioned okay. a little bit TikTok. Yes, um, and I'm going to kind of just open the conversation for you and let okay. me talk a little bit about it because uh, I think you've got something interesting to say. Yeah, I mean, it's it is funny that I'm talking about it since I know very little about TikTok. But it has, it has been a driver for my perm business, a big driver, um, social media in general, like YouTube, huge driver for my business. We got, I got featured before I had the perm company um, on a public, uh, Refinery29 and they had a YouTube video and we're one, my perm is one of the most viewed of their hair series that they did. And it just sent people. Um, and then TikTok. I did, I got reached out to by, um, a celebrity, Debbie Ryan. She was like, I saw a perm on like another influencer client. And she, we, I did her perm and it was awesome. And we did a TikTok video and it exploded. Like, you know, like it was like a million views, like however that happened. Um, but I will say like, I always thought, okay, if we plan everything out and are really organized, it's not that like all I know, and I know nothing, but it's so that it's not such an uncomfortable thing when doing social media, one TikTok and YouTube, in my opinion, are king. That is the best way to convey messaging. Um, Instagram is great for conveying imagery. So I like to use that as like a, a um, digital business card, if you will, or a lookbook to get a like vibe. Um, but the other ones are to see you in action. Like it's, that's like action and YouTube. So like really like when you, when you have something to say, you have messaging you, information to get out there. 
Uh, but yeah, it's been it it's been crazy to see when you do it from the heart, do things that are authentic to you. Like I like to dance, but not on TikTok. And we did a couple <laughs> like like you know I tried to follow the the script. I was like, this is what the, you're supposed to do, and I'm like, this is so hokey and dumb. And I don't need to, I, I'm doing something cool and different and I'm really good at being authentic. So I'm just going to be authentic and vulnerable. And that's what we've stuck to is we make it a point to consistently put out um, useful images and messaging that best convey our brand, but to do it consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to do it, do it, pro do, do it consistently, not dabble in yeah. and out. I think, I, I think uh, that word consistency is probably one of the most underused and thought about words in growing a business. Like just mm -hmm. don't do it until you can do it consistently. That, that would it, be my advice. It has to be a habit. And it's, it's like, even if you don't like it, it's one of the most inexpensive marketing tools that I, there's so many apps out there like to make it easier and do a good enough job. Like, that's the other thing too. I love, like some of my best stylists are the worst at posting. Reason being, they're like waiting for it to be perfect. Yeah. Done is better than perfect. Just I do agree. it. Give yourself and a schedule. That's, that's how you get better. You start average yeah. and then you get better. Like nobody, even people with millions of followers, nobody started and their first post was perfect. Everybody started somewhere. Everybody started with one follower. So just start. I mean, listen, it, my first podcast I got interviewed on, it only took me one time to see a playback of it talking to my throat. And now I raise my computer <laughs> up, you know? But you wouldn't have known that otherwise had you not done it. Now I know. I don't <laughs> want to look like a potato on camera. <laughs> now, before we kind of wrap things up, uh, I okay. want to ask you about a quote and a mantra. But before we do that, I just want to ask, ask you quickly. Um, you used to do celebrity hair. Uh, okay. And then you'd kind of decided that this was not your future. Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, and I, listen, I, it fell in my lap, like the stars aligned. I know nobody in the business and it just happened. It started with the Pussycat Dolls. I was like 19 years old. I think I had my license a couple months. And it was before they were signed as a pop group. They were a burlesque troupe of 20 and they needed a hairdresser on a Friday night on Halloween and nobody was available. And a friend of a friend called the salon I worked at all the way in Orange County, which is far from Los Angeles. And one of the things I'm the best at is I love to work and I'm not scared to say yes. So I have, I still say yes to a ton of free stuff if it's new and sounds fun. I have, that is how I did everything. I mean, I also do get paid. Like, don't worry, I don't, don't but I, I think there, I have, I've seen, some younger stylists struggle with that where they think that they're going to be compensated for everything. I look at it like, you know, I went to beauty school for 1500 hours in the States. We don't have like a required apprenticeship. So a lot of my first, like, you know, seven, 10 years was my doctorate program, you know, and it, I really, I, I was still assisting Michael Rourke, the founder of sexy hair um, at, for five years into owning a salon. Which people are like, that's crazy. No, like I know now about opening a, starting a brand because I did that. And it's like, just get around people and learn, learn, learn. You're not, the, no one, like they're not going to pay you to learn in most cases. Yeah. That's just how, that's why college costs money. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. Does it in New Zealand? It does here. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Uh, my, my motto is JFDI. If you mm. don't know what that means, just look I do. It up. Yeah. I do. Just do I, it. Yeah. With an F in the middle. All right. Let's um, tell me, as a business owner, um, what is a quote or mantra or something keeps you focused, keeps you on the straight and narrow that you can share? Um, courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyways. And that's from John. I love Lane. that. I love that. That's really cool very consistent with what we kind of talked about today yeah I mean sure. that's a big thing like starting a perm line it it took a, years and most of those years I just got laughed at I mean I still like oh it's, and it's always like majority of the time like a lovely bald-headed man laughing at me which I'm like <laughs> I'm not even selling this to you 
you are of zero concern of mine. You know, they're like, oh, <laughs> perms. <laughs> oh, it's like, and you just, you know, if you got a gut tug, you got to keep going. Like the, the bigger the thing you do, the less people are going to get it. And you have to, there's a, another thing, like, don't go to the, the hardware store for milk. Mm, you know, so sure. like, know who to ask for like good advice from. And it's like the bigger, braver things you do, it's going to be a lot less people, but just ask them. Don't ask, you know, your aunt who's like scared of her own damn shadow. Like she's not going to be your best advocate. Although she loves you, she's not going to be like, yeah, put a I'm put a, world. a loan against your house for that. Like, no, she's like that's terrifying. So yeah, yeah. All right, good advice. Uh, what about a book, a resource, or a podcast, or something that you think all business owners, salon owners, should read or listen to? Okay, so these are the more recent ones that I've, I'm like, I, like, I'm not a strong reader, but I force myself to read. I do a lot of things that I'm not technically great at, and it's a forced habit, and uh, reading is one of those, because it's, it has gotten me to most places. Um, one, my CEO, Melissa of Curl Cult, she got our entire business on the book Traction. And it's an operational book that is so hard. I've, she's like forced me to write, read it, I think seven times. And I, I read a chapter, listen to a chapter. So I do both to like really get it. Good idea. Oh man. But it is, it's, and I've, uh, uh, so it's, that's how we operate Curl Cult. I've also brought it into the salon. We do like our L10 meetings and like, there's all this like jargon, but it really like is one of the most brilliant ways to efficiently run a business and if if you're seeking like life or work-life balance or whatever like th this is the 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 best way to cut the fat agree um, love it another one and i i love this one because you know i am an artiste and do not focus the best as you could probably even tell in this interview mm -hmm. um deep work oh my gosh it's like kind of a boring book but it's so useful because it just like explains how to work focused and how effective it can be and to, to make it, to break it up and not make it feel like you have to focus all the time and be this brainiac, but rather like, all right, this is, and it gives examples. This is how this person does it. This is how this person does it. And um, that's really helped me. I keep going back to that book of like to tighten up my, how I'm, coming up with big ideas and and getting a, a large workload across the table okay. and then uh the big leap this is like if you just need that kick in the pants off the edge read it it'll inspire you to do the things i'll make sure that the link to all three of those is in the show notes of this episode um right. janine amazing i'm so excited about what you're doing uh, I love the energy that you bring to the table. Uh, I know people are going to want to stalk you and find you. So what's your dub dub in your socials? Okay, so you can find us at curlcult.com um, and then at curlcult for TikTok and Instagram and everything and Facebook. And for me, I'm just at Janine Jarman. I love it. Um, I really appreciate the time you spent with us today. Um, it's been great to have you on the podcast.